This morning, the Indian Space Research Organization launched the EOS-09 Earth Observation Satellite aboard the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, also called the PSLV C61, from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota. The mission experienced a failure due to an anomaly in the third stage of the rocket, now resulting in the satellite not reaching its intended orbit. Now, ISRO Chairman Veena Ryanan confirmed that the first two stages of the rocket performed normally, but an issue was observed during the third stage, leading to the mission's failure. The organization has for now initiated a technical analysis to determine the exact cause of the third stage up. Here's what the ISRO chief said. Good morning, friends. Today we attempted a launch of PSLV C61 vehicle. Uh, the vehicle is a four-stage vehicle. First two stages performed as expected, and uh, during the third stage, it's a solid motor system. Uh, they, we are seeing observation. Uh, the motor pressure, there was a fall in the chamber pressure of the motor case and, we are, and the mission could not be accomplished. We are studying the entire performance. We shall come back at the earliest. Thank you. Now the, the EOS-09 satellite, also known as RESAT-1B, was designed to enhance India's earth observation capabilities, providing high resolution imaging in all weather conditions. Day or night? Uh, this was the aim. Now, this incident is marking a rare setback for ISRO, which has a strong track record of successful launches. ISRO goes on to say that it remains committed to analyzing the failure and implementing corrective measures for future missions. Here's what happened moments before ISRO scientists realized that there was a fall in the chamber pressure that caused this kind of a, a snag in the third stage. Watch those moments very carefully. Here's that clip. यह दर्शाता है कि गुणवत्ता कितनी सटीक है आंकड़े कितने सटीक हैं यान की ऊंचाई 326 किलोमीटर तथा सापेक्ष गति 5.6 किलोमीटर प्रति सेकंड The outcome of the mission of PSLV C61 EOS09 will be communicated by ISRO through its social media channel in due course Dr. V.N. Jha is joining us this morning. Dr. V.N. Jha is a senior scientist and former joint director of the DRDO. Dr. Jha, good morning. We saw what happened. Yes, it's a setback. We would also believe it's a temporary one. Then the country is extremely proud of its scientists. The chief of the ISRO came on and said that, okay, first two stages, everything that was being observed was normal. Uh, third stage, we have observed some issues and we are analyzing it. When you look at the a setback of this sort that ISRO goes through when expectations are riding high. What are your first thoughts that come to your mind and what is your message to ISRO scientists who work so hard behind this project? Very good morning, Sagrika. Uh, look, in, uh, in R&D, there is nothing called a failure or uh, uh, loss of success or something. We always learn something. In this case also, when uh, uh, third stage was going on, we thought possibly everything is happening as per the copy book. Every blip of the coming uh, signal was absolutely perfect. Till just before this, the, the completion of the third stage, uh, we did notice a departure from the, from the path. And uh, as the ISRO conveyed, there was a loss of uh, pressure. Uh, so it was unfortunate that this happened and uh, uh, some of us, we felt that possibly if there was a provision of uh, uh, ejecting out the third stage at the end, toward the end of its function, mm -hmm. possibly in the present generation PSLVs, the fourth stage has got so much of fuel that it can take the uh, the payload to the, the desired orbit wherever it is to be injected. Right. Uh, that is one stage where you know uh, you know we are out of the system of the ISRO. So I'm talking as an, as an individual. Yes. I'm sure ISRO has got the wealth of uh, experience. I'm talking about right now somewhere the possibly the uh, lack of performance of stage three. Mm. But they are the specialist engineers yes. who are working only on the stage three and the stage four. Mm. But 
you know, uh, sometimes the ideas come from uh, a very, very odd uh, sort of group. Mm. That is where I'm suggesting that in the present generation, when the stage four has got fuel far in excess of the requirement, mm. because these days ISRO is uh, bringing its fourth generation back yes. to lower Earth orbit, uh, to, to, to the lower orbits, so that it comes back to Earth at the earliest. So, Towards that, in case if ISRO thinks that the third stage performance is completing or near completion and there it, some malfunction has happened, yes. it could eject out that third stage and ignite the fourth stage to take the payload forward okay. towards the desired okay. orbit. So, okay. you know, again, I really yes. emphasize we are out of the system. We Dr. are Sir, giving. Just hold your thought, just taking it off from there. We also have Manish Purohit joining us, former ISRO scientist. Manish, I'm sure you were also up and above, just like all of us, glued to this entire mission, uh, counting every second, every moment. But uh, what do you think? And just break it down uh, in a way that our viewers would understand what exactly happened in that third stage and how soon can ISRO rectify this for its future missions? Uh, see, actually, uh, if you look at the graph that was shown at the time when we saw that there, the things were deviating from the normal, you can see that uh, there were two colored lines. One was yellow and other was green. So uh, when uh, when we launch any mission, so there are two provisions. One is for the instrumentation, that is the onboard sensors, the onboard system that captures the data, and we receive that data through the telemetry. Mm. The other is the tracking. So the two lines that we are seeing, the yellow and the green line, one is for the tracking, means from the ground station, from the ground trackers, we are tracking the whole mission and we are getting the data from them. And the other is for the instrumentation, means the onboard sensors, hmm. onboard computer is generating a lot of data. These two datas are combined, they are calculated using an algorithm and when they perfectly overlap, we get what we saw during the stage one and stage two. But as we approached closer to the end of the stage three, we saw that the two lines, they were not overlapping. Means the ground trackers were seeing something else and the onboard system was reading something else. Mm. So that's where the things started going off. And later on, after some uh, two, three minutes, once our uh, chairman, Sir Narayanan, Sir announced that uh, the whole mission will be updated on the social media about the things and right now the mission has not completed successfully, then there was one more graph that was shown in which the yellow line, the tracking line was not continuing while the green line, the mm -hmm. data that we got get from the onboard instruments, it was totally totally out of the place. It was complete zigzag, falling up, falling down, going up. Means uh, when we are in a closed loop system, closed loop mm. system of closed loop guidance, then onboard system reads the data from the sensors, from the onboard sensors on the rocket engine or the spacecraft, mm. takes its own decisions and mm. aligns mm. the whole uh, mission as per the calculated trajectory. Right. But here the hint is, that it started deviating at that point. Now, what is the real root cause of it? That the fault analysis committee, that yes. failure analysis committee that ISRO will be forming and they will be analyzing the data, the whole process, and they yes. will be pinpointing to exactly when the thing started going wrong. But for sure, instrumentation data means the onboard values that you are getting were completely different and completely unexpected mm. as uh, we were getting from the tracking data. And you know, Manish, as we speak, I'm sure the analysis has already started. Maybe some preliminary findings are already with our scientists, which possibly could be shared soon. But Dr. Jha, uh, let's talk about the overall and the larger picture. Despite this hiccup, isn't it true that PSLV's overall track record remains one of the world's most reliable? So, you know, yes, when there is a setback, there is a, there is a sense of disappointment. But, uh, you know, we should not forget what we've achieved you know, in all these years? Well, Sahir we are never disappointed. Actually, we must have learned quite a lot with this. Mm. And that is how, when I spoke to you first time, uh, it was something that we are learning here now. We are, we are experiencing something here. Obviously, where the third stage failed just before its completion, uh, I think the velocity was, the relative velocity was about 5.6 kilometers uh, per, per second. And altitude was in excess of about 230-odd kilometers. Uh, you know, these are unsustainable. At this uh, uh, velocity, 
uh, no payload or no object can be maintained in the object, uh, uh, orbit. And especially at about 230 kilometers or 240 kilometers, we need about 7.8 to 7.9 uh, kilometer per second. So obviously, this velocity, what is uh, what was there, it cannot sustain anything. Obviously, it had to fall. And uh, as we had seen uh, uh, it happening, the, the the entire rocket was in the upper uh, trajectory. So the moment th there was a loss of th thrust, it started uh, losing its uh, velocity. It started losing its velocity, so its track also departed. So all sort of things uh, started there on. That is where we were, uh, I was, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a person who is uh, novice for the rocket technology, because you know uh, our panelist here is there, he will he, he will understand much better than that. What I was thinking that at that stage, had the third stage been ejected manually, I mean by, by the ground uh, control uh, uh, staff, then the entire thing could have been replanned. Maybe trajectory would have been slightly different. Uh, orientation towards it was inclination to uh, to the Earth orbit was in the SSP also. It would have gone on the same path, but may not have reached the, its desired 550-odd kilometers of the altitude, may have been at 500 kilometers. Still, it would have worked in the way if the velocity could have been achieved. Uh, velocity at 550 kilometers would have been about uh, uh, you know, to add to your thoughts, uh, Varun, you know, uh, you know, if you want to just add to what Dr. Jha is saying, also tell our viewers how important is it that ISRO and its chief immediately acknowledge the issue and now they are also ready to share technical details publicly. This is, I think, it's about confidence, it's about transparency as well. Manish, I beg your pardon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, if you see, uh, there is one thing very peculiar about the analysis. So, uh, as soon as the thing started going off, then Chairman Sir came and he briefed everyone that what was expected and what has happened. But uh, there is one one more thing that if we look closely, the third stage completed its ignition, mm -hmm. then the fourth stage started the ignition. Means that process, the telemetry data says that third stage finally completed the whole combustion process and the mm. fourth stage ignited and all that data is with the ISRO. Yes. That is one thing. Still, we lost the velocity, we lost the altitude and this means we lost the orientation and we were in the closed loop guidance system. That is one part. Now, what is happen going to happen next is, uh, see, uh, something uh, something went wrong with EOS-3. We, we had a GSLP launch and EOS-3 also faced some issues and it was that that mission failed. And when the failure analysis committee, they went through all those millions of bits of data, they found out that there was the issue with the pressure in the upper stage, the cry upper mm. stages. And then suggestions were made, simulations were done, and the process was, was made more robust. Mm. If you talk about PSLV, so this one mission uh, can't put a question mark on the uh, versatility or the reliability Absolutely. of PSLV. It's a, it's, it's a work, workforce of ISRO and it has done multiple successful missions Absolutely. as a copy book to yes. the point in orbit insertion. So uh, there is no doubt about that, about the performance of PSLV or in future we have upcoming big missions. Right. So the thing is, these points are learning steps. Yes. So we are going to learn something new here. We are yes. going to uh, unfold a new spectrum of different kind of happenings that yes. can go, you know, with the variables that control the process. And I'm sure, Manish, what you're saying today is a huge message to not just uh, the scientific community and also to young scientists and aspiring scientists that when it's about science, when it's about, uh, you know, innovation, when it's about technology, every small blip is a learning process, is a part that adds to, uh, you know, a greater growth and greater progress. Now, Dr. Jha, like Manish said, when we look at the, the fact that the first two stages performed absolutely normally how much does that reinforce confidence in PSLV score systems we are today we have to remember that we are talking about a workhorse and one with a with a impeccable record absolutely PSLV has got the impeccable record there is absolutely no doubt about it and actually you know I was looking very carefully at towards the end of the third stage uh, of function. There was a flash onto the uh, screen that the fourth stage has uh, ignited. It hit me uh, slightly because when I was looking at the track, 
the third stage was still going on and then we got the information that the fourth stage ignited i had taken a sigh of relief that okay now fourth has stage has uh, taken over it will go to the desired uh, orbit and injection will happen oh. as it is due so that was a sort of feeling it came but then there was a slight bit of a blackout of the entire thing uh, and when now looking back uh, you know uh, what data you are showing right now there. The moment you see that you know that uh, the trajectory is taking a, a curve there, just before that, that is the point where the third stage separates out and the fourth stage ignites after a couple of seconds. Yes. So that is where we are looking at. So what I see right now, uh, again, I re-emphasize, I'm an outsider. I'm not the uh, ISRO scientist. Yes. Uh, uh, I can see that the third stage has not completed its function completely. Uh, so that when the uh, the third stage finishes its function, it it separates out and the fourth stage take over. Yes. That phase has not come up. Yes. So I was wondering if, if uh, it was my <clears throat> rocket, Possibly, I would have kept that provision with me that in case if the third stage has not separated out, mm. I will kick it out because I have got sufficient amount of fuel yes. in the fourth stage. Now we are also, we Dr. Jai, standing by for the technical analysis that uh, teams have already started, uh, you know, at the ISRO. But before I let both of you go, Manish, I want you to have the last word. Uh, if there are scientists part of this mission who are listening to this broadcast, what is that one message that you'd want to give out to them and also to young scientists who were, you know, glued to their television sets observing this mission? The space is hard. And uh, we shouldn't lose hope with uh, one or two mishaps. Mm. We have seen a lot in the past and we have come up a long way. ISRO has seen many failures in the past. Our GSLB was called Naughty Boy because every other launch was having some issues. But now the technology has been tamed and we have matured it. So this is going to give us some new information about something that we might not have explored. Mm. Our Chandrayaan 2 crash landed. Our Chandrayaan 3 was a global headline. Yes. So these missions, they are the stepping stones. Yes. If it's a success, build on the success. If it's a failure, learn from it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Manish Purohit and uh, Dr. Jha for joining us on this broadcast. Let's not lose hope. And as a country, we are extremely proud of the dedication of our scientists at the ISRO. Thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast. With that, it's time for us to take a short commercial break.